So while we can prove the uncertainty principle for the conjugate variables x and p, what we're going to do is that we're going to derive a more general result. So suppose that p and q are two observables and they're represented by some Hermitian operator. So p and q are observables. And they're Hermitian. And suppose that p and q do not commute with each other. Then we can derive an uncertainty principle for these uh, variables. Um, so <clears throat> first of all, let's, re let's define p bar to be p minus the expectation value of p with respect to some state. And q is q, q bar is q minus the expectation value of q. Then it's very easy to show that the uncertainty in p bar is equal to the uncertainty in p. And similarly, the uncertainty in q bar is very, is equal to the uncertainty in q. And because expectation value of p and the expectation value of q are just numbers. This means that the commutator of p bar and q bar is the same as the commutator of p and q. So now we will also need another technical result, which will be shown in an appendix to this lecture. And this is known as Schwartz inequality. And Schwartz inequality tells us that if you have two wave functions, psi and phi, then their norms, the product of their norms is greater than the modulus square of their inner product. Where, of course, the norm of a wave function is given by this. And uh, of course, the norm of the inner product is given by, sorry, So let's now try to prove the uncertainty principle. So we want to evaluate delta p squared, delta q squared, the product. But to do that, we can take delta p bar squared, delta q bar squared, because as we have shown, as we have argued that they're the same. So of course, this is the uncertainty in from uh, in relationship to some state. So let's take that state to be, say, the state chi. And then let's just call the p hat of p bar operator acting on chi to be another state, which is chi p. And the q bar operator acting on chi to be chi sub q. So then, um, you know, this thing is going to be p bar squared, the expectation value, value of p bar squared chi, the expectation value of q bar squared uh, chi, and then explicitly these things are the inner product, sorry, in the inner product of chi with p bar squared chi, and the inner product with uh, q bar squared of chi, and because p and p bar and q bar are uh, Hermitian operators, we can write this as p bar chi, p bar chi, and then q bar chi, q bar chi. 
And then, what is this? Uh, this is just nothing but the norm of the chi p state squared. And this is nothing but the norm of the chi q state squared. And therefore, <clears throat> by Schwartz inequality, this is greater than or equal to the norm of the inner product of chi p and chi q squared. So in other words, what we have shown is that delta p squared delta q squared is greater than or equal to chi p, um, the inner product of chi p and chi q, its norm taken and squared. Now let's consider the right-hand side of this equation, of this inequality. The right-hand side of this inequality is, uh, so we have the norm of chi p, inner product of chi p and chi q squared, and that's going to be um, p bar acting on chi, q bar acting on chi, the inner product, and then the norm squared. Now, because p bar is Hermitian, I can write this as chi p bar times q bar chi, the norm squared. But then what we can do is that we can write the p bar times q bar as a sum of a commutator and an anti-commutator. So what are those? So we can write this as p bar q bar as uh, p bar q bar minus q bar p bar divided by 2 plus p bar q bar plus q bar p bar by 2 acting on chi. So you can verify that if you add all these things, we just get p bar q bar. Now let's call uh, p bar q bar plus q bar p bar the anti-commutator and it is given by the curly bracket of p bar and q bar. So this is the anti-commutator, and of course, p bar q bar minus q bar p bar is the commutator of p bar and q bar. Now, it's very easy to show that if p bar and q bar are Hermitian as they are, then um, the, p, the commutator of p bar and q bar, this is an anti-Hermitian operator. What, what does this mean? This means that P bar, Q bar, the commutator, if I take the Hermitian conjugate, this gives him minus P bar, Q bar. This is very easy to show. And you can also show that the commutator of P bar and Q bar, this is a Hermitian operator. So we can write the commutator of P bar and Q bar as i times some Hermitian operator. Because if gamma here is Hermitian, multiplying it with i makes i gamma anti-Hermitian. And similarly, we can call the anti-commutator of p bar and q bar to be lambda, where lambda is also Hermitian. So here, lambda and gamma are Hermitian. So, you know, with these notation in place, uh, what we can do is that um, we can ask the question, what is the expectation value of, say, gamma? Because, because gamma is um, Hermitian, that means that the expectation value of gamma is real. And similarly, lambda is also, the expectation value is real because they're both Hermitian. So that means that we can write So this means that we can write this thing as one-fourth 
of course this is chi and then we have the commutator of p bar q bar p bar q bar chi and then uh then the whole thing is in modulus then we have chi anti-commutator of p bar q bar and then chi and this is squared this will be equal to one fourth of i times gamma with respect to x plus the expectation value of lambda mod squared now this is a real number and this is a real number of course this is multiplied by i so this thing has the has the uh, structure of a real number a plus i b and you know squared and of course what is this this is just a squared plus b squared that means this is greater than b squared so that means we can write this as being greater than say one fourth of lambda with respect to chi squared so in other words we can say delta p squared delta q squared is greater than or equal to one fourth the modulus of the expectation value of the commutator of p bar q bar with respect to the state chi squared but of course we know that the expectation the commutator of p bar q bar is the same thing as the commutator of p q and therefore we can write this as del p squared del q squared is greater or equal to one fourth of the modulus of the expectation value of the commutator of p q squared and if you take the square root of this then we get delta p times delta q is greater than or equal to one fourth of the commutator of pq expectation value and there's no squared sorry this should be half and this is the generalized uncertainty principle so let us now apply the generalized uncertainty principle to the conjugate variables x and p so their commutator is x p is equals to i h bar so according to the uncertainty principle the product of delta x and delta p should be greater than or equal to half times the modulus of the expectation value of the commutator of x and p but this thing is half times i h bar and uh, which is just h bar by 2 so the result is delta x delta p is greater or equal to h bar by 2 and this is more commonly known as the heisenberg uncertainty principle and the interpretation of this is that if we measure the position of a particle very very uh, carefully and very precisely then uh, the moment of the particle becomes much more um, uncertain and vice versa